So these, what's going to come together here, just for the people watching the video, is we've been learning about Flexbox, and then we learned about media queries, and we learned about meta viewport, and we learned about units of measurement, right? So Flexbox, media queries, viewport, units of measurement, and we needed all four of those pieces. Flexbox, we needed Flexbox, we needed uh, media queries, number two, we needed meta viewport, number three, and we needed to understand units of measurement, number four, to understand these common design patterns with Flexbox, because we're going to see all that in play. I didn't want to show you those design patterns with Flexbox until you understood what meta viewport is, until you understood media queries, until you understood units of measurement, and you're like, okay, I know what an M's doing, I know what a RIM's doing, or a percent, or a pixel, right? So let's, uh, let's, let's see that. And again, the goal here is to do um, responsive design where things are flexing and fluid. And you can see these examples if you go to uh, Google uh, Web Fundamentals. You guys ever trip out on life? Like, life's a trip. You know? Like, cause I said fundamentals, and I thought of my grandpa, who's a fundamentalist preacher. And I thought, well, I wonder if he'd be proud of me. I'm kind of a fundamentalist preacher for HTML and CSS. And he's like, he wouldn't know anything about it. And then I'm like, you know, that wasn't that long ago. I feel like I kind of blink, you know, that my grandpa's here, and he's preaching, and I didn't want to go to church, and he'd take me to church sometimes. And, you know, and all he could talk about was the Bible. And then, you know, he's dead. He's gone. And I used to be 13, now I'm like 45, and I'm like, I feel like I just kind of blinked my eyes or something. You know, people say life goes fast when you're young. You don't quite get that, but it's weird. Trip out on it. So design and UI, responsive layouts, and responsive web design patterns. And mostly fluid is what we're going to be looking at. And then you could say, oh, I want to try it. And then when you get here, you can right-click and you can say, I want to see their code. And when the web is first starting, this is how people learn to build web pages. You just looked at people's code. You're like, that's sweet! And you grab that tag and put it into your code. And you'd have marching ants going around your banners <laughs> and blinking. It was cool! Right? But here's their CSS. And then here's their HTML. And then there's some, like, JavaScript in here for web analytics. It's like, when I... So I got all this code, so I want to show you these, these examples, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but then I cleaned it up, and I threw out all that, and I looked at their code here, and it's like, I don't know why they did that, Alan. Can you think of any reason they did that? They got two media queries with the exact same sort of logic, and so I just said, well, screw that. I'm going to stick them all into one. <laughs> Yeah, just search for Web Fundamentals, Google Web Fundamentals. And so Google Web Fundamentals. And then Web Fundamentals, you just click it. And then here you go into Design and UI. So this is a nice thing to read through. And then go into uh, Responsive Layouts. And then go into uh, Responsive Web Design Patterns. And then I went to Mostly Fluid. So these are the five we'll look at. And I click Try It. And then up here, there's another style sheet called Layouts Common. So I'm like, all right, well, let me look what that code is. Clicked on that link, came over and got this code. And I can put it all together and run it locally and see how it works and clean it up and try to understand it, which is what we're going to do now. Credit where credit's due. So here's the page. It's just a div with five divs. The outer div is the container, so it's got a class container. The inner five divs each have a class C1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, cool. I can wrap my head around that. And then the styling just says, you know what, give each of those inner divs a background color. Okay, cool. And then the layout... is a little bit more involved. So you start mobile first. So this is what we need to build. Just right out of the get-go. Zero to 600. It breaks at 600. So we need all that. 
There are five divs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah! No, five. That was a joke. Sometimes that happens, right? You're like, you think you totally understand. There are the five divs, and you're like, wait a minute, there's six. Where the hell did that six one come from? So there are my five divs. So the container, we know what the container is. Container is padding of zero. All right, so box model, content, padding, border, margin. It's got padding of zero. It's got a border. It's got a margin. Notice the order I, I arrange those in, padding, border, margin, because that's kind of like the box model, padding, border, margin. It's got a width of 100%. Cool. What if we didn't have a width of 100%? Nothing really changed, right? Got a little bit in a little bit more. Put the width of 100% back on. He comes over to the edge a little more. That's interesting. And then we have, what the heck did I just do there? There we go. And then we have a display flex, flex flow, row wrap, flex directions row, flex wrap is uh, wrap. Default would have been no wrap. What would happen if it's no wrap? Just out of curiosity. Mm, didn't wrap. The inner flex items. Well, let's make those little dang digging nagam things wrap. Let's make them wrap. And then we have container div. Box size and border box, so the size of those inner divs inside the container don't change. And they have min height and a min width. All right, so what happens if I don't have that? Nothing, but, you know, maybe good practice. Min height, whoa, gone. So at a minimum, the height's 150. Min width, no difference, because our width is... Uh, the container is 100%. Oh, you know, right here we set width to 100%. So kind of interesting, right? The container div and then we're, we're specifying width 100% right there. Is this targeting the same thing as this, these? So is that selector targeting the same thing as the C, as the classes? They are, right? Because we could say, hey, give me container div, so all the divs inside the container, or we could say, give me C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. So I thought, well, what the heck's that doing there? Let's just move that up and get rid of, get rid of this, uh, right? Get rid of that. Cool, so I move it up and refresh. No difference. All right, so maybe I'll get rid of this stuff down here. These I just put in because I was just playing with them because I could have done flex basis. If you remember, flex basis sets the width of a flex item. So it would have been the same as setting width to 100%. Maybe do flex 1, 1 auto. You know, I was just playing with that stuff right there. But I'll just take those out for now. I don't know. They're kind of interesting to leave in. But they might confuse people. Maybe I'll take them out. And, uh, and then we get up to 600 pixels. And it shifts. So make sure. 600 pixels. Wait. What? No shift. What? Okay, well, let's undo what we just did. Bring that guy back here. Refresh. And then hit 600 pixels. Huh? Huh? I thought those were the same selectors. So... What's going on in our media queries? When we go to at media 600 pixels to 800 pixels, it says C2, 3, 4, and 5 make the width 50%. Well, container div must have a higher specificity in CSS than C1, C2, C3, right? Just a class. Because when I have it here, this will override it, but when I have it here, this won't get overwritten by that. So let's investigate that. I've heard about this CSS specificity thing. 
So I'm going to go to CSS Specificity Calculator. And one of the ones I have is a class container with a div in it. So that tells me I have a specificity of 11. The higher the number, whoever has the higher number wins. Is that right, Alan? Let's test it. Let's see. Because we are scientists. We're engineers. Sometimes I joke with Rio, programming's hard. I should have become a brain surgeon. We're scientists. We're engineers. Let's test it. So we have a div. Let's give it an ID. And the ID will be FUBA. And, uh, and then inside, we'll have some paragraph with lorem. And, uh, and then in our CSS, we will say div color red and foobar color blue. Which one wins? Div would be and pound foobar would be, div would be one, and pound fit bar, that's not what I meant to type, foo bar would be a hundred. So are we going to get red or blue? We got blue, and blue was foo bar, so foo bar was the higher number. You just kind of read the numbers left to right. And if you look at the CSS specificity documentation here, right, they say, okay, here this li has, uh, you know, a, b, zero, has that specificity of one. This one had this and that, that's 11. This one had that and zero, zero, that's 100. They've called theirs a, b, c, where a is id, b is this stuff, c is this stuff. So it's basically this deal here. And you just get the number and the one that's highest wins. If I had an inline style, it says that's even higher. Looking for it to complete it for me. So red, blue, or green? It's going to be green. Inline's got the higher specificity. And we can see that right there. All right, so now we know how specificity works. The higher number wins. We've just proved it to ourselves. And so we are looking at this CSS. And one is a container div, and another one's just a class. So we have dot container, a class, and a div inside that container, or we just have a class. And so container div has a specificity of 11, and C1 has a specificity of 10, so container div wins. So if we have width up here, no luck. And if we have it down here, it'll get overwritten. So do we need min height in container div? Is min height overwritten down here? I have margin left, margin right, width, 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 right? So maybe I don't need this box sizing border box on container div. And I could just put all this stuff right here. Make our code as uh, logical. And like coding is kind of like Zen poetry. You uh, just want to convey like the essence, the essential parts, not have anything extraneous. I don't know if that's the best analogy, but what would it be like? It's like whatever. So let's see if that messes up the code. Refresh. Looks good. Looks good. So I kind of like that. I like this example here because it allows you to play with specificity and clean it up. But ultimately, I think specificity is going to be its own little, little thing. And... Uh, I don't know where to add it. 67, I guess. Add it in at some point.
Okay, so <clears throat> do we need that min width of 150? I'm not sure that needs to be there. So 600, C2, C3, C4, C5 become 50% width. So that's right here. So this is C1, the blue one, the top dark blue one, and then that stays at 100%, but the other four, The other four became 50%. One, two, three, four. So those are, look at how elegant that is. Right? So you're saying that each of those inner divs have a width of 100%. And then at 600 pixels, right? Those four, so right here, each have 100%. And then since it's row, they all wrap to the next row. Flex row, right? And wrap. And then up here, we just say they got 50%. And then they're still wrapping, but each of those four take up 50%. So how would you change the CSS at 800 pixels to get that? What do you have to do? This is C1, C2. What do you have to do to 3, 4, and 5 to get that look? Hmm? Remember what we did to get this look. To get that look, we said right there, which is 600 to 800. To get that look, we said, you know what? C2, 3, 4, and 5 are each width 50%. So to get this look, what does C1, C2, 3, 4, and 5 need to be? Remember, it's row wrap. So once you filled up a row, wraps to the next row. So what does C1 and C2 need to be to get that look? Approximately. 60%, 40%. 60%, sounds good. And 3, 4, and 5, what do they need to be? 33, 33, 33. Yeah, so we put a container at, at minimum width 800 pixels, that media query. We said the container's width is just going to be 800 pixels now. Right, and then margin left auto centers it. If we didn't have that, there's 600, right? And we could have done this. So what's going to happen when I make this bigger? Now that I commented that code out, what did that code I just commented out do? It'll stretch the whole page. You guys are starting to get it, huh? You're the one who answered that. I was impressed. 33.33%. And this min width thing isn't in here. I don't know why that was put in there. All right? It all works. No min width. So sign our min width. But that's kind of a nice exercise just to look at somebody's code figure out why that way and why not change it a little bit. And that specificity thing was pretty cool. What time's our class go to? So now? Five minutes ago. So let's, let's do a little homework. I'll make us some homework for y'all. <laughs>